Hello, in this video I'll talk about risks and risk drivers associated with investing in MBS. The key risk in MBS is called prepayment risk. A prepayment is any payment toward the repayment of principal amount of the loan that's in excess of the scheduled principal payment. For example, if the bank was expecting $1,000 per month over the course of the year, if customers or borrowers repay $1,100, then $100 is in excess of the expected $1,000 per month. So that $100 divided by the amount, which is $1,000, is 10%, right? That's prepayment rate or prepayment speed, you know, how fast the borrower is repaying or prepaying the loan. So wh why is this a problem? Well, the borrowers tend to pay down earlier when rates fall and later when rates rise. So when interest rates are falling, then the borrowers may be repaying faster. Why? If you think about it, when rates are lower, then they, they may be able to actually borrow at a lower rate, right? So they repay at a higher rate, which was original originated from the bank originally, and they actually so-called remortgage. In other words, uh, reissue or reborrow. So they borrow and repay the old higher rated loan. So the effect of prepayment is that the amount and timing of the cash flow from the mortgage loan are not known with certainty and it depends on the path of the interest rates, whether they're going down or up. The lender or investor doesn't know for how long the loan will be outstanding and therefore what the timing of the principal payments will be. This is also a problem because there is a reinvestment risk, right? At, at what rate they will be reinvesting. This is true for all mortgage loans, not just the level payment, fixed rate, full amortized mortgages. Prepayment risk may be driven by the following risk drivers. Systematic, unsystematic. Systematic means you know, exercise of the interest rate option when rates are low or when the rates have fallen, uh, unsystematic could be reasons unrelated to mortgage rates. It could be just demographic, you know, reasons. People are, if they, they like to pay down and repay earlier. Let me illustrate the prepayment risk in terms of this cash flow profile. Let's say you've got a 12-year cash flow profile. So let's say you've got a set interest here, and based on the interest, you've got this level of cash flow. And from Year four, if the rates have fallen and the borrower actually decides to prepay, you know, then what happens is that the amount of interest-based cash flows, the interest cash flows will fall for the entire year, for the entire period of this mortgage because the interest that's calculated based on the principal, right, will be less. So all of the cash flows will be less. So the bank loses all these cash flows. And because this is most likely to happen when the rates have fallen, you know, the bank is not going to be able to lend to another borrower at, at the same rate as it did here. It's going to be because the rates are lower now, right? So they will only be able to lend at the lower rate. So th this is the risk, basically. Now let me actually uh, give you uh, an example of a prepayment penalty that some countries like UK use in order to compensate themselves for the loss of that cash flow as in the previous example. So they actually do something called a lockout penalty period. In other words, for the first, let's say, uh, X years, one, two, three years, they actually ban them to prepay. Or if they prepay, there is a penalty amount, lump sum, that the borrower must pay. You know, this compensates the bank. And because the p uh, behavior of the borrowers is such that the closer you are to the maturity, or the less likely to you are pre to prepay, then you c if you only the bank only needs to uh, put it up to year X, not the end of your the, that mortgage loan, year 30. So it's up to a certain period where the prepayment is highest. In other words, from year zero to year X. This is when the prepayment risk is highest, and from here it basically levels off or starts to fall. Now, because of this nature of the prepayment risk, the price curve, the price yield relationship in MBS, 
is not convex, it's called negatively convex. This is the bond. You see this line here, 20 year. This is a typical bonds uh, price yield uh, curve and it's convex. However, in a bond, in a callable bond or mortgage backed security, uh, the, the profile, the price yield relationship is similar. So it looks like this. So it's negatively convex. So let me illustrate with this one. So it actually it illustrates it better. So you see this tangent that's on top. So the the price of the MBS is limited on the upside. In other words, the price may fall when the yield goes up, but when the yield goes down, as in regular bonds, for example, the price will go up. But in a mortgage-backed security or callable bond, the price appreciation, the increase in price when the yield falls, is limited. So it forms this kind of a negative convex curve. So this is basically something that illustrates the risk, okay, as it relates to prepayments, and also the value of the option that's between this and the price of the regular fixed coupon bond. So mortgage-backed securities and other callable bonds may have negative convexity, which cushions the bond's price rise and accelerates its fall. In the next video, I'll talk about types of mortgage-backed securities.